The Isle of Man TT 2023 is here. It's been billed as the greatest show on earth. Most incredible event start now. Best of the best are here. Legends and newcomers will push themselves and their machines to the limit on a thrilling 37.7 mile public road. Best place in the world for a ride bike. All you can do is smile the whole way around it. The world's most unique rest. Crowds are beginning to build, but the atmosphere everywhere is really great. It's got to be on bucket list to come across here and see it. The fans are arriving from all over the world for two weeks of thrilling entertainment in every corner of this stunning island. days early just to soak it in really get used to get settled because we're now going to be here for nearly three weeks and yeah just just relaxing really relaxing before the madness starts yeah. well, I think last last year it sounded out I think it were a lot more uptight as a whole I definitely feel more relaxed than I did previously which is nice really I'm trying relaxed. to get Dean into manifest like manifest oh, shut up have you heard of as much crap in your life she goes about all the time Oh, you need to manifest. What do you say? Manifest. You manifest it. I'm like, manifest you do. what? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I think I'll just go with the more relaxed approach. Outside chance of a body arm in, in the uh, program. Outside chance. Glad they got oh, the split on there. The split's on my belly. She didn't make me look as bad. Look at your back. You've got to shift it in like that a bit. <laughs> it's exciting. Just seeing the Isle of Man and. and Obviously excitement for the TT, but nerves as well, and it's a feeling that you never get for any other race, just the TT. Well, there you go, the sharks, the, I thought you had the, the snake one. Police station rolls up. Yeah, I'm all right with that, man. That's daily, daily ride. <laughs> We need to make sure we all get parked together because it's it's literally like living next door to all your best mates and um, we're all parked up there and there is like such a community in the paddock of all the riders and their families whether it's the kids or the girlfriend or whatever everybody has a laugh and has a crack it's such a fun time it's the best two weeks of the year look at the full illustration on the door oh yeah full, full illustration on the door how to use it <laughs> Why are you so stressed to relax about the barbecue? Oh. Where's the barbecue? See, you're a bit odd in this world. You can't do that, do you? It's got a bit real now, Nick. I'll make it happen. <laughs> How's it going? Hopefully, you get more laps this year. Yeah. This weather keeps really up, we'll be alright, won't we? You know what that means, eh? Everyone's pushing like f mad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, speeds will be good. Yeah. You know what's called that? It's called a two-way pump. What's a two-way pump? It blows both ways, up and down. See that? That's where it's wrong, Max. Because you know that way, it sucks air in. Done. That way, it blows it out. Yeah, well, obviously, my dad's here as well, racing the sidecar, so my mum and dad are both here. Obviously, I've got the kids and the missy. I've even brought a little dog this year, so I've got one of, my, one of the dogs here. That, that looks just like him, doesn't it? <laughs> it's actually... Look at that for a colour match. <laughs> you know what I mean? You wouldn't even tell, would you? <laughs> you want cheese? Cheese sandwich? You're going to eat it, aren't you? What's Looney like, Max? She wastes everything. Correct. Yeah. Why did she get away with murder? Because she's the youngest child and the favourite. Correct. Have you got a bag? It's... Well, you're going to do it. No. Someone's going to trod in it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's yeah, a... I'm on it. I'm on it. No, racing hasn't started yet. You can't get away with this. But I just don't like picking dog poop. Yeah. All done, medical well, done, signed on. It's just all I've got to do now is my briefing and I'm fully fledged, uh, ready to go for the week. Right. It's like the calm before the storm almost, isn't it, do you think? The you know, way everyone's waiting round and waiting to go and the weather's been nice and it's, it's almost, it almost feels a bit holiday-ish, do you know what I mean? I've been eating, I don't have this cheeky little ice cream here and there. I've repaired the caravan. 
I had an excursion, somebody decided to use the caravan as a, as a battering ram. So I've had a few, uh, a few hours fixing my caravan, so that's all back to new. Uh, that's it, used my time quite valuably really. <laughs> Yeah. Eddie doesn't trust my life, so he likes to have his own camera on to see what I'm doing. I think that's fine, Eddie, do you? Yeah. Is that thing on already? It is, isn't it? <laughs> um, my name's Mike Brown. Um, farming for a living, bikes for a hobby. This is my third TT, so relatively new to it. Came, uh, Came with the team a week early to set up. Bit of a holiday, doing plenty of laps, bit of cycling, bit of swimming. The only reason I do cycling and, and training is basically just for this two, this two weeks. Like after that, you don't need to be overly fit to do any race on the bike, as far as I'm concerned. But here, the fitter you are, just the easier it is on the body. So, am I ever going to win a race around here? Then probably not. Like, even to get in the podium is like unbelievable. And for a competitive person like me, kind of knowing you're probably not going to get there, like, why am I even bothering? Like, I don't know. I was never a bike person growing up when I was small, or there's never a goal to come here. Just progress some road racing at home and short circuits, and then just said, oh, we'll do a TT, and it's just, that's just the way it's gone. There's never been a goal of winning a TT. I'm not even that sure I'm all that interested in bikes. I'm just competitive. If I wasn't here this week for these three weeks at the TT, like probably wouldn't even watch it on TV because I'm not there. I just wouldn't have the interest. But when I'm here, I'm just all into it and fully committed. Why do I do it? Don't know why. I don't know what it is because I don't enjoy it. Do you know? Nah, how could you? They're riding around there nearly 200 miles an hour trying to hold on, sweat going into your eyes and still come back every year and and still mad to do it for some reason, but don't know why. Helmets, gloves, boots, leathers. Hi, I'm Raul Torres Martinez from Spain. Uh, and I'm just a policeman. <laughs> As you can hear, I'm just a policeman that loves road racing. My target, first of all, first of all, it's to enjoy. I'm a privateer. I know that I don't have the bikes that have other riders. I know that maybe I don't have the rider skills that have other riders. So I'm here to enjoy. I love road racing and I will give my best. I just wake up, <laughs> go to the toilet, <laughs> and, and start working uh, today with the Aprilia. Yesterday with the R6, I dismantled the R6 yesterday, I changed the, the heat gasket, I install again and I put the engine on, and the bike looks, it works, uh, and today it's the same but with the Aprilia. My rest of the team crew, one mechanic arrived on Saturday, Saturday evening, and the rest of the team arrived yesterday evening. So I put a new engine on the Prilia alone. I put the cylinder head gasket alone. I do the screwing alone. I do the thing on alone, do you know? And it's quite tough. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. I'm not rich, so I I, I have to to do the, me the the mechanic part of the bike. Uh, I do the paint job of the bike. I I transport the bikes and all the stuff. Uh, I'm the one who books the ferries. Uh, I'm the one who books the the flights for the team crew when they will come. Um, I'm the go for men, do you know? My, my life, it's, it's work and the rest of the day thinking about motorbikes. Uh, I, I will give my 
in every lap, in every session, in every race. So if I feel comfortable with my 100% given, I will be happy. It's been good, that documentary. Looking nice, isn't it? Yeah. It came across well. Series two. Here we are again. 2022 TT was unreal for myself, to be quite honest. To win one TT is a massive achievement, and to win four in a week is unbelievable. How would I describe myself? Well, uh, relaxed or laid back. <laughs> I don't know what else I would describe myself. I don't like standing still. I like to be doing something all the time. I very rarely kind of chill out. In fact, I always get told off for not chilling out enough. I mean, we're not even riding or racing today, but I'm still putting leathers on. This is the third time I've had leathers on this weekend. <laughs> Just because we have, well, I have some commitments with BMW and uh, I did a charity auction with um, a pillion lap. You've just been like doing back-to-back -back appointments. Yeah, pretty much. There's been a bit of time, but not loads. I'm a yes person. Uh, yeah, I try and please too many people. That's probably my downfall, if you like. But there you go. I get downtime when I put my helmet on and go riding. <laughs> That's my relaxation is I get to go ride. <laughs> but no, it's all good. Uh, so right now, the reason I've got my leathers on, I've got to do some BMW filming. So I'm going to go up to pit lane or start line. They've got some, I don't know, some bikes that I need to either ride or do some filming with or whatever. After doing it so many times, are you still uh, excited? Excited, yeah. More, more yeah, than yeah, excited? Always, yeah. I think the more you do it, the more you want to do it. You're talking. He has to face the wall a little bit. Three, two, one, action! Fine. Oh, yeah. Perfectly fine. <laughs> All right, and cut, and the whole action needs to be a bit quicker. How, how are you feeling, buddy? I'm buzzing. I can't, I can't wait to get going. Lovely. Always wanted to do that. My name is George Holiday, and I'm racing Ironman TT, my debut year, racing the R6 in the Super Sport class. I just want to thank you all for coming initially. Like, like I was saying, you are the future. You're not the now, you're the future. So just build yourself up gradual, learn the track, and just enjoy it, okay? Yeah, a lot of preparation. I've done, done plenty of laps with Milky and Johnny. Just got to build that confidence up. But what interests me is that you go around, you enjoy it, and you come back next year, and then the following year, the following year, and the following year. TT's always been the goal uh, since I was coming here as a kid. I've been many, many years to come and watch, but yeah, it's his first time, first time racing it. Dad used to race, he's done. TT quite a few times on sidecars. So yeah, it's valuable to have someone like that in your corner. I know what it's like, he's in control of his own destiny out there and, and I know that's how he likes it. He likes to be on his own. So, you know, it, it, this, this place I think plays to, to Georgia's strengths. Uh, it's just a good family team. We always just run on our own bike. Uh, everything's under like, our roof, our control kind of thing. So it's a good close-knit yeah. team. Into the garage part here, all the suits. So this is a newcomer suit with the orange bib built in and once you've qualified you don't have to wear the bib anymore but I quite like it actually, it stands out. I, I knew right from a young age he wanted to be on motorbikes and wanted to do things that you know he enjoyed it he's tried all different sorts of motorbikes loved it so i think the natural progression for george was this is his ultimate goal and um so yeah he's doing it and you can't say fairer than that when you've got a dream and you're able to do your dream amazing the wait is finally over. The bikes are back and the Isle of Man TT 2023 is here. The buzz on the island has been growing for weeks now and the long range forecast right through TT Race Week looks incredible too. Dare we dream of 2018 when the weather was just perfect and we tore up every record in the book. About 10.40 we hope to get the newcomers out for their speed controls lap. That is part of their initiation, as we always say, into competing on the TT course. We've got half a dozen or so newcomers on the solo machines. They'll have spent the last six months, a year, maybe more, just, just learning onboard videos, coming over and, and doing laps in the car. So it's, yeah, they're, they're, they've, got a, they've got a big job in front of them, but they'll be really excited and nervous and all the senses that go with it. How much sleep did you get? 
about four hours on and off. Yeah. Yeah, just going to wait, wait for the turn, toss him and turn in the shadow, but couldn't stomach any breakfast either. Yeah, there's definitely some nerves, but I think nerves are normal. I think you, know, you wouldn't be human if you were racing around this place without nerves. If you don't feel any nerves, then you're not human. One minute start line, one minute. Milky Quail is obviously going to take these guys round for their lap, so he's rolled up to the start line and then they follow on behind. Could you try and explain to people like us that don't race at the TT and have no intention of ever doing so what the appeal is? To me, I think, I don't know how you could watch it and not want to do it, to be honest. If someone says to you, there's a closed road and you can go as fast as you want, there's nothing coming the other way, that's a massive appeal to me. It, it already puts a smile on my face just thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think you can, you can stand outside the road and watch it and not be blown away. Brains are under my now at the minute, just trying to soak everything in really. Uh, yeah, trying to get accustomed to the speed and the bumps and like, the tunnel vision you're getting as well, but yeah, we'll get there. You're officially a TT rider right now. That's it, eh? Yeah, it still doesn't sound real, but yeah, I can't wait. We're looking at around about 20 past 11 now for the Super Sport and Super Twin free practice session. Then midday for the big bikes to be on course, midday for the Super Bikes and the Super Stocks. already being wheeled onto Glen Crutchley Road for the opening qualifying session of TT 2023, a combined Super Sport and Super Twin session. One minute start line, one minute. See here the number six machine, that's Michael Dunlop and the MD racing the pattern. Enjoy this, here we go. Wow, 122.907 for Michael Dunlop, an unofficial lap record on the opening lap of qualifying at TT on the pattern. Absolutely sensational. The very first qualifying lap from a standing start of Isle of Man TT 2023. That's extraordinary from Michael Dunlop on the Super Twin. In terms of the Super Sport, it's Dunlop ahead again on 17.49.355. Peter Hickman, last year's hero, uh, is in second place, the number 10 at 17.51.082. Dean Harrison and Davy Todd, third and fourth. And Connor Cummings, the local man, makes up the top five. Raul Torres has stopped on a Super Twin. Where is the hole? Oh, oh, yeah. He's oh. tripped onto the exhaust. No, no, I see, I see. Uh, these guys are nudging 130 miles an hour pace. This opening qualifying session is absolutely setting TT23 alight. As Harrison crosses the line, it's 130.752. Wow! Dean Harrison then sets the first over 130 uh, lap of this qualifying session in the Superstock. What a start from Dean Harrison. 130.4. These laps are absolutely amazing. We've already seen one unofficial lap record this afternoon, and it looks like there may be signs of another. Peter Hickman is absolutely flying now on the Monster Energy by FHO Racing BMW. Peter Hickman through the speed trap of Sulby Strait over 200 miles an hour.
Dunlop in the Superbikes. Dunlop went out late on and got a two lap run on the hook. He went fastest at 131.782 miles per hour. Harrison the second on the Dow Kawasaki, 131.674. John McGuinness, a superb afternoon for him. Fourth fastest, 129.398. Hey, like, I'm all at the same. I feel like should, the cars feel high on the... Yeah, that's not Absolutely incredible opening qualifying to this TT 2023. Sensational times right across the board. And it sets us up an absolute treat for the rest of this meeting. Was it bang on 200? 200.2 on lap one, 200.4 on lap two. Yeah, but is that all right? Two bikes ridiculously fast, <laughs> as we all know. They certainly wake you up by the time you got to the top of St. Ninians anyway on the first lap. But at the end of day one, under blue skies and a bright sun on the racing aisle, Dunlop is top of the pile. And as the rubber burns and the engines roar, tomorrow we'll be back for more. Dog's poorly. Someone fed dog. He's not agreed with him, and he, but, but, um, he's just got back from vets now. <laughs> what a nightmare that is. It's poor little mine. You all right? You got muck on your face, mate? What's his me? name? Arnold. Arnold. Arnold Schnauzer, yeah. <laughs> Dean's having lunch with the mayor. Fancy. Mommy. We're having pot noodle in caravan. Mommy, <laughs> I got pot noodle Which, ready. Get it ready, I'll get it. It's so busy now with the fans and things like that. It's unbelievable the amount of people here. So you do struggle to get a little bit of quiet time. Probably the most peace and quiet I get is when I go down Bray Hill, because nobody can get to me then. I've sort of uh, got my helmet on, I got my earplugs in, and, and and away you go. But no, yeah, I think it's riding round, especially the first few practices when there's no stress and no, or no pressure and things like that. When the sun's shining like it is now, for you to go ride through the villages, over the mountains and things like that, it's just there's no place like it. Back to, back to shop, right? Just got busy all of a sudden, aren't it? Today, it's shit starting to become real. Oh, sorry, Max. It's fine. It's a shake up shop, isn't it? I don't mind going shopping. Look, I've asked you to come with me three nights in a row and you won't come to either bloody one. Can you blame me? Would you want to go shopping? She just said it's shit going shopping oh. and she wonders why I won't go. Thank what have you got? Can you have yogurt? Yeah. Poor old Arnold. Poor old Never mind, poor old Arnold. Poor old me, it cost me 150 quid. Old dog got the shits. I had to weigh 150 quid at the vet so far. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Really bad. Hey. I don't know what's happened to him. Just, I don't, I don't, no, I don't know. He, 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 we woke up one morning and he uh, like just stayed shat in the caravan. <laughs> Where's the carpet? Is this a lot of fun? He's just drying out there, yeah. It's yeah. barely dry now. I'll, I'll reintroduce him later. Oh, I don't even want to bring it in. Why? I can't bring myself to do it. It's the glamorous life of the TT paddock. The glamorous life. Someone were walking up to the thing and they were like, oh, you're famous now, obviously, because I watched that documentary. I went, I'm still cleaning shit off at car. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't it up far yet. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, last year with my injuries I couldn't stand and this year the novelty of standing I'm kind of uh, over exaggerating a bit. I think I'm standing everywhere and it's just putting a bit of pressure on. Yeah well last year was a little bit different. I was injured last year riding around so it was kind of a bit of a just ride around and get laps in for this year. These guns are a good job to, to get them softened out. Have you been sleeping alright? Yeah, yeah. Step like a baby. There's a traveller in me somewhere, I seem to like the caravan. <laughs> we went out this morning and done a lap together. Uh, we set up the mountain for how long? Set up it for 20 minutes watching lads going around. Some head the balls, right, right. Just 
control tonight, Brady. Yeah. I would not like to be a spectator around here. No. He's up TTT road is saying that Hunt is riding around, scared the life out of you. Scared of the shit clean of It's definitely not a spectator sport for me anyway. Yeah. I remember the first time I went down and watched him bottom of the like, seen the first two bikes through, which, yep, that'll leave me. And off I went, just sat in the car. Yeah, no. It's stupid. I suppose it's probably, if, if, if people knew no different and weren't riding the bikes, it'd probably make no difference. When you're riding bikes, you know kind of exactly what's, I want what's going stick. on. Yeah, it's like, ooh. Nope, not for me. So you never just been out for curious as a spectator? I was in 2011, but I never went out to watch, it was always in the paddock. Never done a pit stop. And uh, one of the mechanics, he said to me, he oh, you know, stand just on the arm crow bar there, and feel him come down by. And it was savage, like, it was stupid speed, like. Of course, Lee, like, you put your hand out, you touch them. Aye, like, you can pull some for the shoe off. Aye. <laughs> so who were you um, pissed off before? William the Lamb. Oh right. 2011, Wilson Craig. Did you do fuel and stuff? No, I done the visor and that was enough. I was shit myself. You were more nervous? Oh. Changing the visor? Oh, horrendous. Than you are sitting at doing it 100... And... Aye, but I'm, I'm, in, I'm in control then. Oh, two seconds. Lee's ringing. Changing the rear tyre here in the pit stop, like, there's nothing more. What? Wow. There's no, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it for anyone. I wouldn't trust myself to do it on that. You're in charge of his back wheel. He's going to do 200 mile an hour, it's like 20 seconds later. Nope. You get injured and you forget about me straight away, you <laughs> <laughs> How are you feeling? Oh, living the f dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, the state of him sitting here in his woman's with shorts. He's a beast of a man. Oh, rawr. How are you doing? Well, I got up to go to the toilet, so I got her parked up again now, though. <laughs> Johnson. I've been, uh, yeah, been in the kitchen today, and I've been to the bathroom, and then I spent the rest of it on the sofa just in case. Are you watching the practice tonight? Oh, I got a lot else to do. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go get my dinner. I'll ring you when I'm getting ready, sure. Hey, <laughs> right, bye, bye. <laughs> This is what happened, if you see. This <laughs> should be a cold rod, <laughs> you know? Look, crazy. You see, that's, that should be, but if you can see my finger. Uh, hello, how are you? This is a completely destroyed engine. So, so this is the saddest part. You are racing, you are risking your life. It's quite dangerous. And these kinds of problems um, could make a huge difference. Uh, for instead of crash or not to crash, do you know? So keep going or stop your life, no? But this is life, you must keep going. Good evening race fans, we're back with a bang for day two of qualifying from the Isle of Man TT23 and if yesterday is anything to go by we're in for a night of high speed and high drama. It's been another glorious day on the island and it's a balmy spring evening as the riders from all five categories have their second chance at getting to grips with over 200 corners on the mountain course between Glencrutchery Road and Governor's Dip.
couple of suns shone to start TT 2023. The island looked its amazing best and the fans flocked to watch. And although it was a bank holiday beginning to the event this year, it was all business for Michael Dunlop, topping every class and an unofficial lap record to boot. Hickman, Harrison and the rest, they weren't in holiday mode either though. They were right there at the top of the timesheets as the event fired spectacularly into action with the monster energy by FHO Racing BMW of Peter Hickman becoming the first rider ever to be recorded at over 200 miles per hour on the Sulby Strait. And in the sidecars, do Ben and Tom Birch will have a real challenge on their hands. Peter Founds and Jevon Wormsley passing them on the road and the leaderboard at this very early stage. The roads are now closed all the way around the TT course. 37 and three quarter miles of asphalt awaits the competitors and the sun-kissed weather has stayed with us all day. What are we going to see from this man tonight, Peter Hickman? Peter Hickman leads the way on the Monster Energy by FHO Racing BMW. His fastest lap of the night and the fastest lap of the week so far, 132.079. Dean Harrison, 2.8 seconds or so slower on the uh, Dow Kawasaki. Third fastest is Michael Dunlop, 131.843. Connor Cummins, 130.924 for him. I can tell you that Michael Dunlop uh, on lap one went 196.279 through the speed trap, but on the second act, James Hillier has beaten it at 197.5, 197 and a half miles per hour. Connor Cummins is recorded as stop at the 33rd, so he is stuck up on the mountain. He'll really struggle to get home from the 33rd, I would imagine. There really has been some change tonight. Everything very, very different from yesterday. Peter Hickman up top with 132.079. Dean Harrison, one second behind him. Then comes Dunlop. Connor Cummings in fourth, followed by Davy Todd. <laughs> News on Connor Cummings. He is apparently walking down from the Kregner Bar, hoping the team will pick him up. He's hoping to get a lift back here if somebody can get out to pick him up. I'd hope somebody at Kregner Bar would maybe just take pity on him throw him in a car and get him back here as fast as possible. Connor Cummins, motorbike rider, coffee person. <laughs> uh, weekends are wear heels and uh, just uh, get very chat now. All eyes then on the screens for the arrival of Connor Cummins. There we are. Oh, he's doing he's, he's eating into the lead of Peter Hickman. Here he is, Connor Cummins, and he's second. 133.116. What a stonking final lap. I do keep myself to myself, I'll be honest. And not deliberately, it's just I've always been like that. I'm quite a private person. Uh, He's very lucky that you're here today, actually. <laughs> Joking. I might come across a bit miserable, actually. But I don't really care. It's just the way I am. I've done every step, apart from the number one. But that's what I'm here to do. Just because Connor has got like this insatiable desire to win the TT, it doesn't make him any less of a father. He might think that he's been selfish, and I know that a lot of people, you know, looking from the outside in, might think, oh, he's got children now, he shouldn't be racing, but I don't see it like that at all, and I think I'm quite a rational person. I don't particularly love the racing, um, but I do love him, and if that's what makes him happy, that's such a cliche, but it makes me happy as well. You've got to be happy in life, otherwise, what's the point? I don't really remember a, a huge amount about the actual uh, crash. I can remember seeing my last pit board at the Gooseneck and then I've got a, a vague, vague memory of uh, like what everyone's seeing is me cartwheeling down the mountainside and um, that's, that's as much as I can remember.
then I woke up in hospital. I couldn't move, I was flat on my back, I'd bust my back, dislocated in the knee, smashed my, my left arm up and I was a proper broken man. You know, it was, it was just a case of I just had to dig deep there and um, get back right again. And it was bloody hard work and it's not something I'd want to do again for sure. It's day three of the Isle of Man TT23. We're almost at the midpoint of practice week already and we're already starting to look towards this weekend's opening race days. Peter Hickman on the number 10 bike, the super stock with the red plates and the white numbers. What's Peter done in practice? Well, on this bike, nothing yet. Not done a lap on it yet. Here comes Harrison. Where are we at with that, Boydie? Fastest lap of the week, 133.399 on the Dow Racing Kawasaki. And then Peter Hickman is also under that 17-minute mark. Seriously impressive pace. Michael Dunlop on the hook, racing machine is absolutely flying. We can see him on the screen now. Over on the jump ahead, he's right down on the tank. Dunlop is searching for every single tenth of a second he can find here. He is really, really pushing. John McGuinness is third fastest on the superbikes. He's over 130 faster than any lap he did at TT 2022. Connor Cummins, but he joins the 130 club on the Volenko by Padgett's Honda. So Connor right up there now. And also Davey Todd having an absolute scorcher on the superstar. Nights like these are what CC dreams are made of. It has to be said, non-stop action, loads of laps, really high speeds, glorious weather. What more could you ask for at TT 2023? Connor Cummings has apologised to his team sponsors and supporters after confirming he won't race this weekend. It's due to a viral illness. In a post on Twitter, he says his health hasn't been too clever, describing the decision as tough. He's uh, in hospital at the moment, um, on, a, on a side ward. Um, you know, he has an infection. And um, really, we're just wishing the boys the best, you know. Let's hope he pulls through in time to have a, a ride round, perhaps later in the week. And of course, he's gutted. But uh, the doctors have told him that you know, there's no riding motorcycles to at least Monday evening. So. Um, just sending him a big cuddle. Davey's going well, though, but he seems in good spirits. Yeah, just seem in good spirits. You know, people forget, Davey's still on a big learning curve. It's his fourth year here. Came in 2018 and 2019. We have three years away. Um, so last year back. No, no, let's let the boy keep doing his own learning. It's, it's mega been with a team like Padgett's. They've been racing TTs for 50, 60 years or something now. It's mental, really. Um, more than twice as long as I've, I've been alive. They obviously know what they're doing with the job and we've just, we've, to be honest, been really unlucky this week. Me and Connor, my teammate, and his bad luck has unfortunately continued a lot, a lot worse than mine um, with his illness and what have you. But yeah, it's, it's class been with Padgett's and it's a, a really nice atmosphere always in the team, like a really family atmosphere. And every single year I've gone faster and faster and faster and I know that'll keep keep going that way. I still feel like I've got a lot to learn and a lot to give, but I've just got to do it in the right way where I can come back next year. It's Friday lunchtime on the Isle of Man, and that means only one thing, the last qualifying session of TT23. Good afternoon, everybody. Schools on the island are now broken up for their TT half-term holiday. Meanwhile, here at the TT Grandstand, we're in the business of breaking records. Michael Dunlop was inside the Super Twin lap record way back on Monday in the opening qualifying session. The big bike classes haven't been left out either. Peter Hickman delivering the fastest qualifying laps we've ever seen at 133.797. So, a scintillating week of qualifying has us all G'd up for racing. But before we get to that, teams and riders have one last chance, one last qualifying run to make those final settings. The rows around the TT course are now closed. They've closed in the last few minutes, but we are ready to rock and roll.
I would love to be sat on a hedge with a beer this afternoon watching these guys go around, especially Michael Dunlop, who is absolutely flying. I think this is going to be quite special. It's going to be really close for a super bike lap record. The fastest qualifying so far, which is set by Peter Hickman yesterday at 133.797. Hickman is through Solby and it's over 200 again, 202.193. Michael Dunlop is 3.8 seconds inside outright lap record pace. This is potentially the fastest ever lap of the TT course that we have seen. Michael Dunlop is out there riding quicker than anyone has ever ridden the TT course. This lap could be absolutely sensational. Sensational stuff indeed from Dunlop. Number 16, Mike Brown is out there on the course. He is on his super stock bike as we keep an eye on uh, Michael Dunlop. Dunlop will be with us in less than what now? 40 seconds perhaps. It's going to be right there. This is going to be nip and tuck, you know, for an outright lap record potentially. He's coming, here he's he coming. Comes. Here comes Michael Dunlop, he's done it 135.531. The fastest lap ever on this 37 and three quarter mile course. Michael Dunlop, take a bow. Goodness me and grandstand, get on your feet because this is an extraordinary ride. With 16 minutes, 42.189. He is six tenths of a second inside the outright lap record. Congratulations to the whole Hawk Racing team. What a superb lap this has been. 135.531 miles per hour. There is really only one big, big story today, and that is Michael Dunlop's unofficial all-time fastest lap around this 37 and three-quarter mile course. The anticipation couldn't be much more, Boydy. This week has set us up absolutely amazing. We've got all of the top guys coming to the fore of these leaderboards exactly as we expected. Uh, they're really, really close in terms of the times going into today. There was just uh, so two seconds between the front three. Those three big names of Dunlop, Harrison and Hickman. What about Michael then, 135.5? New unofficial lap record, so that's, that's obviously special, in it? But the conditions have been great and I've been saying all week it'll come. Um, I think Michael's always a rider that gives 110%, no matter whether it's practice, qualifying or the race. So I don't feel like I've been able to show the speed that I have. And um, also as qualifying, do you need to? The race is a different thing. There's a lot of other things that have to come up, uh, come into play there. And honestly does, does he have that pace for six laps? I don't know. Does anybody? Also, I don't know. There's pit stops, there's mechanicals, there's everything. TT's a endurance race, not just a not just a lap time thing. So we've got a long way to go yet. Fair play to him. He's uh, he's riding really well at the minute. But in the same breath, he, every time you look at it, you think I want it. I need to. I need to beat him. It's great to see Michael being so fast. His fans don't believe me, but I'm actually really happy that he's that he's back and he's not that he ever went anywhere. You know, we don't want to just see one person doing it all the time. It's just it's boring for everyone, and it also if there's no competition there, then what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> Michael's been doing well. He? He's been he really well. He, yeah, you know, um, I, I, even Tommy goes out, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> you know, but he's actually really riding particularly well. I think. I think you know, he's. he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's just finding everywhere he needs to be, and he's just he's just on it, yeah. you know, and he's keeping it keeping it on. But then there's a few places where you're like, oh, oh yeah. Michael, yeah, there's a few you're shots. Like, really? That's what it's all there to do is to make the job faster. And that's obviously always going to get faster. It's the same with records. Every record's going to be broken. You know, every, that's the nature of life. You know, what I mean, people think like, they might be hero today. Tomorrow there'll be a zero, there'll be somebody else come along. Times change, things change, and records are there to be broken. That's the reason why we have a word called broken records. Yeah, there's definitely some nerves, but I think nerves are normal. I think you, know, you won't be human if you were racing around this place without nerves. Just clipped the wall at Laurel Bank, a good smash on the pelvis. You know, the solos are great, but the sidecar fraternity is, is, is completely mental. They're all 
a little bit batshit crazy. Josie the Parrot. Helmets, gloves, boots, leathers. Hi, I'm Raul Torres Martinez from Spain. Uh, and I'm just a policeman. <laughs> As you can hear, I'm just a policeman that loves road racing. My target, first of all, first of all, it's to enjoy. I'm a privateer. I know that I don't have the bikes that have other riders. I know that maybe I don't have the rider skills that have other riders. So I'm here to enjoy. I love road racing and I will give my best. I just wake up, <laughs> go to the toilet <laughs> and, and start working uh, today with the Aprilia. Yesterday with the R6. I dismantled the R6 yesterday, I changed the, the heat gasket, I installed again and I put the engine on and the bike looks, it works uh, and today it's the same but with the Aprilia. My rest of the team crew, one mechanic arrived on Saturday, Saturday evening and the rest of the team arrived yesterday evening. So I put a new engine on the Aprilia alone. I put the... Downfall, if you like. Well, there you go. I get downtime when I put my helmet on and go riding. <laughs> That's my relaxation is I get to go ride. <laughs> but no, it's all good. Uh, so right now, the reason I've got my leathers on, I've got to do some BMW filming. So I'm going to go up to pit lane or start line. They've got some, I don't know, some bikes that I need to either ride or do some filming with or whatever. Hit the bit. After doing it so many times, are you still uh, excited? Excited, yeah. More, more yeah, than yeah, excited. Always. Yeah, I think the more you do it, the more you want to do it. You're talking. He has to face the wall a little bit. Three, two, one, action! Made it. How are you? Fine. Well Perfectly fine. <laughs> All right. And cut. And the whole action needs to be a bit quicker. 
are you uh, feeling about it? I'm buzzing. I can't, I can't wait to get going. Lovely. Always wanted to do that. My name's George Holiday, and I'm racing on Man TT, my debut year, racing the R6 in the Super Sport class. I just want to thank you all for coming initially. Like, like I was saying, you are the future. You're not the now, you're the future. So just build yourself up gradual, learn the track, and just enjoy it, okay? Yeah, a lot of preparation. I've done, done plenty of laps with Milky and Johnny. You've just got to build that confidence up. What interests me is that you go around, you enjoy it, and you come back next year, and then the following year, and the following year, and the following year. TT's always been the goal uh, since I was coming here as a kid. I've been many, many years to come and watch, but yeah, it's his first time, first time racing it. Dad used to race, he's done TT quite a few times on sidecars. So yeah, it's valuable to have someone like that in your corner. I know what it's like, he's in control of his own destiny out there and, and I know that's how he likes it. He likes to be on his own, so, you know, it, it, this, this place, I think, plays to, to Georgia's strengths. Uh, it's just a good family team. We always just run on our own bike. Uh, everything's under like, our roof, our control kind of thing, so it's a good close-knit yeah. team. Into the garage part here, all the suits. So this is a newcomer suit with the orange bib built in. And once you've qualified, you don't have to wear the bib anymore, but I quite like it actually, it stands out. I, I knew right from a young age he wanted to be on motorbikes and wanted to do things that, you know, he enjoyed it. He's tried all different sorts of motorbikes, loved it. So I think the natural progression for George was this is his ultimate goal. And um, so yeah, he's doing it. And you can't say fairer than that. When you've got a dream and you're able to do your dream, amazing. The wait is finally over. The bikes are back and the Isle of Man TT 2023 is here. The buzz on the island has been growing for weeks now and the long range forecast right through TT Race Week looks incredible too. Dare we dream of 2018 when the weather was just perfect and we tore up every record in the book. About 10.40 we hope to get the newcomers out for their speed controlled lap. That is part of their initiation, as we always say, into competing on the TT course. We've got half a dozen or so newcomers on the solar machines. They'll have spent the last six months, a year, maybe more, just, just learning onboard videos, coming over and, and doing laps in the car. So it's, yeah, they're, they're, they've, got, they've got a big job in front of them, but they'll be really excited and nervous and all the senses that go with it. How much sleep did you get? About four hours on and off. Yeah. Yeah, just going to wait, wait for the turn, toss them in turn in this do, but couldn't stomach any breakfast either. Yeah, there's definitely some nerves, but I think nerves are normal. I think you, know, you wouldn't be human if you were racing around this place without nerves. If you don't feel any nerves, then you're not human. More excitement than nerves. <laughs> One minute start line, one minute. Milky Quail is obviously going to take these guys round for their lap, so he's rolled up to the start line and then they follow on behind. Could you try and explain to people like us that don't race at the TT and have no intention of ever doing so what the appeal is? To me, I think, I don't know how you could watch it and not want to do it, to be honest. If, if someone says to you, there's a closed road and you can go as fast as you want, there's nothing coming the other way, that's a massive appeal to me. It, it already puts a smile on my face just thinking about it. Yeah, I don't think you can, you can stand outside the road and watch it and not be blown away. Unbelievable. What a buzz. I want to get out there again now. It was very bumpy. <laughs> that was the biggest eye-opener. Brain's at 100 mile now at the minute, just trying to soak everything in, really. Uh, yeah, trying to get accustomed to the speed and the bumps and like, the tunnel vision you're getting as well. But yeah, we'll get there. You're officially a TT rider right now. That's it, eh? Yeah. Still doesn't sound real, but yeah, I can't wait. 
and we're looking at around about 20 past 11 now for the super sport and super twin free practice session then midday for the big bikes to be on course midday for the super bikes and the super stocks Machines are already being wheeled onto Glen Crutchley Road for the opening qualifying session of TT 2023, a combined Super Sport and Super Twin session. One minute start line, one minute. See here the number six machine, that's Michael Dunlop and the MD Racing, the pattern. Enjoy this, here we go. Wow, 122.907 for Michael Dunlop, an unofficial lap record on the opening lap of qualifying at TT on the pattern. Absolutely sensational. The very first qualifying lap from a standing start of Isle of Man TT 2023. That's extraordinary from Michael Dunlop on the Super Twin. In terms of the Super Sport, it's Dunlop ahead again on 17.49.355. Peter Hickman, last year's hero, uh, is in second place, the number 10 at 17.51.082. Dean Harrison and Davy Todd, third and fourth. And Connor Cummings, the local man, makes up the top five. Raul Torres has stopped on a Super Twin. Where is the hole? Oh, oh, yeah. He's oh. tripped onto the exhaust. No, no, I see, I see. Oh, yeah. These guys are nudging 130 miles an hour pace. This opening qualifying session is absolutely setting TT23 alight. As Harrison crosses the line, it's 130.752. Wow! Dean Harrison then sets the first over 130 uh, lap of this qualifying session in the Superstock. What a start from Dean Harrison. 130.4. These laps are absolutely amazing. We've already seen one unofficial lap record this afternoon, and it looks like there may be signs of another. Peter Hickman is absolutely flying now on the Monster Energy by FHO Racing BMW. Peter Hickman through the speed trap at Sulby Strait over 200 miles an hour. in the superbikes Dunlop went out late on and got a two lap run on the hawk he went fastest at 131.782 miles per hour Harrison the second on the Dow Kawasaki 131.674 John McGuinness a superb afternoon for him fourth fastest 129.398 I'm all the same. I feel like I should. Do the cars feel high on the. Yeah, that's not good. Absolutely incredible opening qualifying to this TT 2023. Sensational times right across the board. And it set us up an absolute treat for the rest of this meeting. Two bikes ridiculously fast, <laughs> as we all know. They certainly wake you up by the time you got to the top of St. Ninians anyway on the first lap. But at the end of day one, under blue skies and a bright sun on the racing aisle, Dunlop is top of the pile. And as the rubber burns and the engines roar, tomorrow we'll be back for more.